NRA TV with Grant Stinchfield. Hi there, folks. Welcome to the program. It has happened more than once. Violence on college campuses, violence from the regressive left in an attempt to shut down free speech. Now, if you disagree with them, you'll likely be called all kinds of names. Kira Robles was at Cal Berkeley to hear Milo Yiannopoulos speak back in February. She was pepper sprayed in the face for it. Watch it unfold. I'm looking to just make a statement by being here, and I think the protesters are doing the same. And props to them for the ones who are doing it nonviolently, but I think that's a very real thing indeed. So. Are you surprised? Right in her face. That is why we call them the violent left. And that is why they are dangerous and they are bad for America. Joining me now is the attorney who filed the lawsuit on behalf of Kiara Robles, Larry Clayman. He's with Freedom Watch. Larry, it's great to have you on the program. Same, Grant. Thanks for inviting me. Look, this is a very important lawsuit. Not a lot of people in the mainstream media are talking about it. What's the goal here from you and your client? Well, the first goal is to get justice for Kiara. Okay, She was violently attacked. She was maced. She was harmed. She's been emotionally scarred by the whole thing. So that's number one. Number two, it's to hold people that are associated with Antifa and others accountable for what they've done. And not just Antifa. We've also sued the University of California at Berkeley, as well as the Berkeley Police Department that sat around twiddling their thumbs as Kiara was being maced. So it's to set an example. It's also to show the country grant that you need to. we need to step out. We need to put ourselves forward and we need to take some risk. This is a very brave woman uh, and put a stop to this. We're trying to do it peacefully and in the courts. We don't want to be like the thugs of Antifa, those so-called anti-fascists that are in reality fascists and communists that are trying to destroy the country. Yeah, you know, it's frightening what's going on. And this was really just one example. We are now seeing this happen over and over and over again, this kind of violent behavior simply because someone doesn't agree with somebody else. Well, it's, and it's even beyond that. You're absolutely right, but it's beyond that. These are revolutionaries. These are Bolshevik-style communist revolutionaries that want to deconstruct the country, destroy it, take it down to ground zero, assume control. They think they can do that and then build it back in their own Bolshevik-style state. So it's clever, and it's being financed by someone you've heard about, George Soros, who is an ultra-leftist, atheist an individual who has financed all these leftist groups, nearly not just Antifa, but Black Lives Matter, uh, New Black Panthers Party, others. So it's a concerted effort. And on behind that is uh, potentially President Obama in his palatial mansion in Calorama, Washington, orchestrating a lot of this as well. It's, it's a calculated attack by the left who use whatever means they can to bring this country down, to just, not just to destroy the Trump presidency, but to actually refashion the country in their of you. Yeah, I used to say they were doing it secretly. It really isn't even that much of a secret anymore. And I do believe that Barack Obama is still pulling the strings. Many of his minions that worked with him are pulling strings. And clearly you talked about George Soros as well. Uh, Larry Clayman, I want to I want to run a soundbite from your client, Kiera, who was who was maced uh, and listen to her talk about the incident. Take a listen. For the people who sure. have, have or haven't seen the video, basically what happens is I'm, I'm talking to some reporter, you know, wearing a Make Bitcoin Great Again hat, and this guy is trying to, like, egg me on. He's trying to say, well, why are you here? What do you what do you want to see here? It's like, well, I'm just another gay Trump supporter, like, trying to see another gay Trump supporter, you know? what? We're all there to see Milo speak. Mm -hmm. And I just mean, like, dear God, like, right, right as he was starting to just really get to me, I just told him, you know what, like, I'm done. Like, some of the people here are protesting peacefully. But the majority of them, look, and then right as, I, right as I'm giving, you know, my little spiel to the people who are here doing it peacefully, they come up from underneath, a woman actually comes up from underneath and just pepper sprays me in the face. I think the message here, Larry, is that if it's not Kiara yesterday, it's going to be my son or your daughter or, or your mother or sister tomorrow. It could be anybody. Grant, we think alike. My words, exactly. Uh, this is important for all Americans we are now in a civil war. We're now on the streets. It's not just these radical fascists, but we also have these charges of racism. We, they are the flip side of the Ku Klux Klan, of the neo-Nazis, Antifa, and these other people in and around them. And we are engaged in a war, and we're hoping to solve this peacefully and in the courts. Now, we filed this in the Northern District of California. That's a very liberal court, as we know. 
it's underneath the Ninth Circuit. But just recently, even Nancy Pelosi was forced to come forward and say that Antifa was doing the wrong thing. Of course, walk mild, weak, whatever. But I think she even fears for her life because, frankly, uh, this push by the left is going to create a pushback by these radical groups like the new black, like uh, the neo Nazis and others. And we're going to have a full fledged war. So we're trying to solve this peacefully with, through our justice system. And we pray that it will work. All right, let's take another listen to Kiera because she talked about not just the pepper spray at play during this. Here she is. Watching my friends fall to the floor. One of my friends gets beat, like with these flagpoles that they're protesting, you know, peacefully with. And I mean, I, I was lucky that I was able to jump the fence and get out of there in time, but it was very, very difficult to watch people you know, that, you're, that, that are your people, like, on the floor and not be able to, to help them. I mean, we all wanted to defend ourselves, but they make it impossible for you to do that. Like, they come prepared. Larry Clayman, you're with Freedom Watch, and it really is about the freedom. You know, many of these groups, the Antifa groups, they, they call themselves part of the progressive movement. I like to refuse to re use the word progressive. They're regressive, and I've even dubbed them as radical liberal terrorists. Well, that's what they are, you know, thank God for the NRA, too. I'm a member, obviously. Uh, the fact that we have a Second Amendment right, that we can arm ourselves to defend ourselves, is crucial. Uh, we're not going to start it, uh, but if we have to defend ourselves, we will. And that's why I'm so proud to be on your, your show, because you are doing valuable work here in addition to what we're doing in the courts. People need to be prepared to defend themselves. Well, I truly believe, Larry, that it's groups like Freedom Watch, like the NRA, like the Heritage Foundation, and I could go through a whole slew of, of conservative, like-minded groups uh, with all of their supporters. And that's the key here, Larry, is all of the supporters of these groups that need to band together, get informed on this stuff, and push back. And, and I don't mean push back violently. I mean push back with what we call the clenched fist of truth. It's about words. It's about truth truth and it's about pushing the information out there because information is power and you're not getting the information from the mainstream media today Larry and and especially about your lawsuit uh, against Antifa and, and Berkeley the media doesn't want to talk about this do they well no they don't and I'll tell you something as well Grant the Justice Department has been neutered okay because as much as I like the Attorney General he's a very nice man he's a gentleman he's scared of this because he's been called a racist unfairly he doesn't want to wade in. He's investigating now the neo-Nazis and, and the Klan, but he doesn't want to investigate this. And he needs to be pushed by our supporters to man up and do something. And it can't just be Freedom Watch and the NRA that are out there. It has to be our attorney general and the Trump Justice Department. Yeah, as long as we keep coddling this kind of behavior, it will embolden them, and I think we're already seeing that. Uh, one more soundbite from Kiera here. Uh, this is about condoning this kind of stuff. It plays into what we're talking about. They're out there with their signs saying that this is a civil war, and then they're beating people up with their flag saying this is a civil war, and everyone on the left just condones it. It's like in California, literally everyone thinks, oh, well, you know, most of, most of them were peaceful. I was saying that as I got pepper sprayed, and that wasn't even the worst of it. I have no idea how much worse it's going to get. I, I really don't want to find out, but that's why I go to these things and, you know, tr to the best of my abilities, try and say, like, please to God, like, can this just stop? Can this just stop? Can we actually have an intellectual debate on a college campus? Apparently not. Larry Clayman with Freedom Watch, you're representing that girl. What do you say to Berkeley and the police department and other police departments across the country that literally sit back and do nothing in the face of this violent behavior? What I say is we're going to hold you accountable. And that's what I said before. If you're not going to defend us, we will. We're not going to start it, but we're going to defend ourselves. And we're going to defend ourselves in court and elsewhere. You know, I would hope that the people of California, there are a lot of good people in California, but they should put their marijuana cigarettes down and sober up and figure out what's going on. Uh, they have no idea. It's, it's la la land, literally, and I'm not talking about moving. You cannot have a university system like this. In fact, this university system even has rules on speech by professors, mm -hmm. which says that we can't say this country is a country of opportunity because we're going to offend people. You know, this is what you're dealing with in California, and it's spreading to the rest of the country. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. and that's why what you do, Grant, in educating the American people and what I do is very, very important. Well, it sure is. Uh, we're proud to partner with you. Larry Clayman, Freedom Watch is the organization. Uh, uh, and we appreciate you coming on so much today and talking about all of this. Thank you.
God bless. God bless you as well. And we wish her luck in her lawsuit. It's an important one at that. Uh, now turning back to the storm, we have met some incredible people, and it's been my pleasure to bring you their stories over the week. Uh, we will leave you with this. Have a great weekend and a peaceful holiday. I'm Grant Stinchfield. Take a watch. People are heeding the call, and they are going. And I hope it's a wake-up call for the mainstream media to really look in a guy's face like you, Kenny, and see the goodness that really is there. Man, I'll sit. I'll walk. Everybody can ride the bus. I'll open the door. I'll do anything I can. And I do it every time I see any of my brothers and sisters. But the only thing that's going to heal those people and all people is loving, loving and I hate when the media stirs up. It's like it's like somebody, I know they're trying to forgive. I know they're trying to move on. I know they're trying to love. I see them. I, meet, I don't even meet the people that I see on the media. All the people I meet love me like I love them. We might get another 12 inches of rain. I'm coming to help you. Yeah, we love that flag. Thank you for your service, sir. Chevy Girl to March Life for any available boats over in the Mesa and Tidwell area trying to launch. Mesa and Tidwell. I love my country. I've always loved my country, but I didn't know my country. And I, and I get out and I go everywhere I can. But I met my country this weekend, the last three days. I met them in every color, every shape, and every race. They are so grateful. They are so courageous. They're amazing. And I want our country to come together. You know, I mean, our country was built on love. And love isn't a feeling. It is doing what is best for someone else without regard for yourself. It's the best thing you'll ever do for yourself, but you can't do it for yourself. We've all been hurt. Some of us have been hurt far worse than others. Most have been hurt worse than me. But nothing will fix hurt like loving other people. Being loved is nice, but when you get busy loving, when you get busy putting other people before yourself, that's what built this nation. That's why this nation is great. The only thing that can tear it down is selfishness and fear. We saw that this weekend, and we have a loving nation. It is still here, and I want us to start loving each other. It amazes me, the acts of heroism that I see. And I've been so encouraged to see all of the convoys coming from Louisiana with their flat boats because it's the Cajun Navy, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless the Cajun Navy. They've been coming to Texas to help out Texans and get them out of the floodwaters. It's amazing what we've seen. I saw a video of 15-year-old Declan who's, walk, who's going around with a boat in Maryland, in Texas, rescuing people. That's how he spent his morning. He was going around with his little friends rescuing people. That's what America is made of. You're watching NRA TV with Grant Stinchfield.